What is up, Scan Fam? Welcome to another episode of the Crypto Club. Um, hope y'all are having a lovely week. We are here with Dennis and Gons as always. Hey everybody. Hello, hello. Right on. Um, kicking off today, we've got sort of a downturn coming to the markets. You know, I mean, what goes up must come down. We had quite the explosive um, last few weeks here. Still holding strong above that 200 MA, but we are down about 5% today. Um, and this is following an SEC press conference. Um, taking a look at ETH here. Still kind of crabbing in this range, maybe breaking out of it just a little bit, but you know, also still holding that 200 day moving average, which is really good to see. And yeah, I think, you know, in general, we'll crab or go up over the next few months. You know, I mean, this downturn is kind of spooking a lot of people, but it's to be expected after the week that we have had. Um, Without further ado, we'll get on to our first story here. So Twitter is to support a longer tweets as they seek regulatory license as a payment platform. Um, so Twitter has introduced a feature allowing longer tweets, allowing Blue members in the United States to post up to 4,000 characters. Elon Musk, the CEO of Twitter, attempted to obtain permits from governmental bodies and the courts to advance Twitter's goal of a payment system that may also support crypto. Um, you know, I think it's worth noting here that while they want... Um, the option to support crypto down the road, I believe they're just going for a fiat-based uh, payment system to start with. I think th this is, I mean, bullish in my opinion. Uh, I believe that if you start off with fiat, um, we know Twitter is very Web3 focused. It has a lot of blockchain and crypto communities utilizing the platform. So I think overall, having the functionality to use cryptocurrencies or have their own cryptocurrency potentially is definitely something uh, I see happening for Twitter. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Hundred percent. Um, you know, I think it was either an episode or two ago we talked about, um, you know, how much of a marketing scent it would be be for Twitter to launch their own token. Um, you know, of course, I'm sure they would wait until there's very clear guidelines around doing so. Um, but that could be, you know, that could be a big thing in the future. Um, so since the format has been made available, people who have subscribed could be encouraged to post longer tweets rather than threads. If non-blue users keep posting topics, it can become chaotic and confusing. Additionally, Twitter announced on its blue support website that it would soon limit the amount of advertising that blue subscribers would view in half. Elon Musk has also discussed a more pricey ad-free subscription option. Twitter Blue previously provided the ability to post 60-minute movies. There will be a fee for sharing content on the website, as Musk wants to attract bloggers and video creators. Brazil, Indonesia, and India are now included in the 15 markets where Twitter Blue is accessible. Um, so attempts have also been made in the past by Twitter to secure licenses. Um, so earlier, Financial Times reported that Elon Musk was attempting to secure permits from government agencies and the courts to advance Twitter's vision for cutting-edge payment system. Elon's decision to transform Twitter into a social payment and messaging platform would use a system that accepts both fiat money and virtual currency. Um, I believe Elon Musk was actually one of the co-founders of PayPal, if I'm not mistaken. You know, so I, and I think that, you know, kind of a comprehensive platform, this social... Um, payment platform, you know, almost like Venmo, you know, Venmo has the comments and like friends and things like that, but obviously it's very limited as far as the social aspect. Um, you know, I think it could be huge. Musk also said the network would first enable payments in peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. The system would eventually be built to support crypto payments. According to the Financial Times, Twitter's top executive, Esther Crawford, was entrusted with detailing the company's payment system strategy. People aware of the circumstances say that, he is work say that she is working with a small team of specialists to accomplish the objective. Musk's strategic strategy to expand Twitter's revenue sources beyond advertising includes choosing a payment system. This could be huge. You know, if Twitter does considerable volume on um, payments... I'm sure they would take a fee per payment and that would be just another revenue source for Twitter. And I personally think with Elon Musk, Elon Musk's past, um, he definitely is an expert in creating payment systems. And, and, and I'm sure that um, that's definitely a huge use case for Twitter. And I just, I'm excited to see how it's going to develop. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings of Elon Musk being the CEO, but I do think uh, there's going to be some innovations that are going to truly rethink the possible of the platform and the reach and um i'm super excited to see this payment kind of process come into play 100 percent. yeah if, 
it feels like he's definitely going to push the envelope, especially with his experience. And, you know, on top of that, just also his love for cryptocurrency as well. There's definitely a lot to look forward to as like Twitter's development progresses with Elon in charge. Right. Um, you know, he's certainly one to kind of break the mold. So it'll be interesting to see how this develops. Um, let's go on to our next story here. So what are AI tokens? Um, if any of you guys have been following the DeFi world or seen the YouTube short that we posted two days ago, um, you'll know that AI tokens have been going crazy. But what exactly are AI tokens, right? So simply put, AI tokens are cryptocurrencies that utilize AI in some way to improve security, user experience, scalability, or a variety of other factors. In theory, AI can be trained to further automate and build trust or efficiency in many crypto systems. AI tokens can also be digital currencies designed to power AI-based apps or projects, including decentralized marketplaces or exchanges, image or text generation services, AI-based investment protocols, and more. So the crypto space and the world's so the crypto space and the worlds of business, education, and more have been buzzing about ChatGPT since its release in mid-2020, and particularly starting at the end of 2022 as it gained widespread popularity. ChatGPT is a chatbot developed by OpenAI designed to generate human-like text and perform a magnitude of language tasks, such as processing information, answering questions, and more. The, poten the potential for ChatGPT to further disrupt the crypto space is huge. For instance, Justin Sun, creator of the Tron blockchain and token, has outlined a possible AI-based decentralized payment framework based on and supporting the chatbot. Um, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, as AI gets implemented, if it will be, um, you know, kind of a more centralized thing like ChatGPT, um, where, you know, people are just using the APIs to develop their own ways of using um, the platform or, you know, if there will be a broader kind of set of knowledge that you can tap into, create your own AIs for different tasks. So perhaps more importantly, the sudden ubiquity of ChatGPT has sparked new interest among both crypto investors and those outside of the community in the possibilities of AI technology. Microsoft recently announced an investment of of $10 billion into ChatGPT's developer, OpenAI, further boosting interest. Some crypto tokens experienced gains of 75% or more in late 2022 amid the rise of ChatGPT, and these gains have continued to accumulate for a few select AI tokens. As of early February 2023, the total market of the total market value of all AI tokens was about $1.6 billion, small compared with the broader crypto space. But this is growing quickly, particularly as institutional investors' cash continues to flow towards AI. Um, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of vaporware as far as AI. You know, it's kind of hard to really um, create a functional business model with a token. Um, you know, sure, there are instances where it works. Um, but, you know, for a business to turn out revenue, you know, and really sell a product, AI, or a uh, Having a token is not always the best way. So I think it'll be interesting to see what some of these ecosystems look like. I, I also think I'm very excited for this as well, because personally, I think AI can help a lot of these projects that don't have enough talent or didn't have that, that missing piece uh, to get them to a certain goal. And I think AI can fill a lot of those gaps, especially as AI gets better and better and more complex and able to solve larger issues. Um, it's going to only further the crypto space uh, like and propel it, essentially. So I I'm excited. I think this is uh, um, two nascent kind of sectors or industries that are kind of booming. And, and it's crazy to have a time where um, a lot of people are building in the bear, utilizing these technology. And I think in the next um, bull run, uh, a huge factor to that will be AI uh, kind of propelling this industry forward as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, definitely kind of allows smaller teams to, you know, take on some of the bigger projects. Um, you know, I mean, just personal anecdotes, you know, here at CoinScan, we've been using ChatGPT to, you know, greatly increase efficiency in some of the aspects of our development. Um, you know, and we are just one instance, you know, I think AI is going to reap a lot of markets um, of a lot of jobs, but at the same time, it creates, you know, an equal amount of opportunities. Definitely for innovators specifically, 
And it'll be interesting to see if if crypto can kind of tie itself in some way to AI, um, because it, AI will definitely you know shake the uh, shake a lot of industries as as we know them. Um, and crypto is still up in the air because, like you mentioned, Devin, the the idea of AI tokens is, is very right. Like right now, they all have like very limited use case. Most of them are just generating pictures. Um, and so it's very like pseudo utility at the moment, but you know, same thing with NFTs. If we can get to a point where there's actual real world utility behind it, there's, you know, proper business models in place to take advantage of AI and take advantage of crypto, then we could really see something special flourish from that. Right. I do agree. Um, you know, I think whether, you know, AI is integrated to a token or not, um, it is going to propel the industry. Um, as well as a lot of other industries. But, you know, I think that crypto moves so fast, um, you know, whether a project is using AI to develop itself quicker or really implementing AI in the fundamentals of the project, I think overall, uh, you know, the integration is good for the industry. Um, we'll get on to our next story here. So um, the Nansen CEO kind of shares his take on AI by saying that it's prominently going to be the crypto user experience. Um, so as the crypto industry attracts more users, developers are laser focused on improving the user experience, a major pain point for most new users. Artificial intelligence has often been seen as a technology that could improve how people use and interact with crypto. In the latest episode of Hashing It Out, the integration of AI with crypto is discussed at length. Um, the narrative that artificial intelligence is taking over has intensified with the popularity of open AI and applications like ChatGPT. The trend has also extended into the crypto industry, which has witnessed a price surge in tokens associated with AI-related crypto projects. Zvanovic is certain that AI will be integrated into cryptocurrency applications in a way that will significantly improve user experience. Um, you know, I think really that is the ultimate pain point for crypto at the moment is user experience. You know, I mean, that's kind of what CoinScan really provides, you know, is a good user experience for DeFi users. Um, but I mean, there's so many different verticals within crypto that just severely need a better user experience, whether it's wallets, um, you know, kind of transaction tracking, portfolio tracking, the list goes on. He explained that similar to Bing integrating ChatGPT, several crypto on-chain data platforms will use AI to help users find information more easily. According to the Nansen CEO, most of the results that platforms show users currently require substantial work, which can also be changed to human-readable content with artificial intelligence. After several cryptocurrency platforms went bankrupt in 2022, institutions adopted a new standard called Proof of Reserve to provide transparency for their end users, which has sparked debates. Zvanovic believes that proof of reserves or reserve transparency is useful. However, he doesn't think it's enough unless they also show what the terms proof of solvency, which can be done through a combination of proof of reserves and proof of liabilities. Um, you know, a little bit off topic, but I think that is a good point. You know, you can have reserves, but, you know, if you if 50% of your reserves are holding 50% of a token, you know, you can't cash out those reserves if you really needed to because um, there's just the issue of liquidity. Well, we'll get on to our next story here. So proposed laws in Israel that would see cryptocurrencies classified as securities would cause huge damage to the local crypto industry, according to the chief of an Israeli crypto service provider. Cointelegraph magazine editor Andrew Fenton spoke with Ilan Asterik, the CEO of Altshuler Shaham Horizon. The Tel Aviv-based firm provides cryptocurrency custody and trading services and is one of the few firms in the country approved to deal with banks. Sterk said the current legal situation for crypto in Israel is quite complicated. He explained the current proposal is to have digital assets un under the supervision of the Israeli Securities Authority, the nation's securities regulator. And to classify a digital asset as a security is changing everything here, he said. Sturk didn't think the current proposal would be enacted, enacted as is, saying he was not sure it will be the same way as they want it to be. I personally just think regulation is always going to be extremely tough, uh, especially within the cryptocurrency um, industry. I just think it moves too quick for some of these lawmakers to make smart decisions as well as decisions that it's almost like an umbrella uh, regulation for all of these different uh, cryptocurrencies. So overall, uh, we're going to see more and more of these kind of stories where 
Uh, somebody says one thing, but it, it really depends uh, on time and how quickly um, cryptocurrency market evolves, essentially. Right. You know, I mean, it's fitness square peg and round hole. Pretty much all of the leadership in these organizations that are in control, you know, are from an older generation. And, you know, sure, they can research cryptocurrency. Of course, there, you know, are ones that are fans and understand it. Um, but generally, you know, I think there's a distaste. Um, so among the proposals was one that would allow crypto service providers to operate in Israel, at least temporarily, if they had a parallel license from abroad. Sterk said that this proposal would make some lives a little bit easy regarding the operations of foreign crypto exchanges in Israel as a license in the country can take up to two, three, or four years to get. According to the latest January figures from the ISA, it is estimated there were around 150 companies operating in the local crypto industry and more than 200,000 Israelis invested in crypto. You know, Israel in, in particular, Tel Aviv is a major hub for, um, you know, tech innovation. And I think for Israel to kind of cripple that, the expansion of that industry in Israel would just bite them in the long run. Um, you know, I mean, more and more people are coming out to say that crypto is here to stay. Um, you know, I mean, of course, that's the sentiment that we share here at CoinScan. Um, but, you know, it's a huge industry and lots of room for innovation, still extremely young. And I think that, you know, if any country really goes ahead and just bans crypto or says it's all a security, yeah, I just do not think that's going to work out well for them. Yeah, they're they're essentially, you know, they're trying to cripple the crypto industry, but they're just going to end up crippling themselves because crypto has such a far reach that you're simply just going to remove, you know, all the possibilities of, of crypto coming into your country and bringing revenue and profits and, you know, you know, things that you can tax and people are just going to go elsewhere. They're going to go to Portugal. They're going to go to Puerto Rico. They're going to go to, you know, all these different com com countries that are embracing cryptocurrency. So it, it doesn't make sense for for Israel to do this, honestly. Um, but again, uh, even even in this article, they said that it probably won't pass with the current you know verbiage that they're using. Um, so just time will tell. But it's one of those things that the the naysayers or non-believers will definitely be hurt by this in the long run. Yeah, no, I certainly agree. Um, that's going to wrap up this week's Crypto Club. Hope you all have a lovely weekend and week ahead. Um, hopefully we see markets bounce back from this downturn a little bit. And without further ado, this has been the CoinScan team coming at you, and we will see you guys next week.